In, uh, Dr. Vladimir Jamal, thanks for joining us very much. I notice immediately, is that a mask you are wearing under your neck? And what is the position about masks in the Czech Republic? Yes, this, this is a handmade mask. Uh, it was done by a friend of our family and uh, we started to use them in the middle of March. And since we started to use these masks publicly, I mean, it was adopted uh, um, by 99% of people starting to use it, uh, the growth rate changed and flattened very quickly within a couple of days. So um, we are now quite on the safe side in uh, stopping the, uh, the spread of the disease. And just to explain for my Irish listeners, Vladimir, you were one of the scientists, many of you got together with what we can do about this virus. And the one thing you recommended was mask wearing. The Czech government decided to bring it in mandatory. And you're saying it flattened the curve very quickly. Yes, uh, uh, it was, uh, I think, March 16, we had a meeting of the uh, team called Stop COVID Czechia. And uh, it is uh, formed by a group of people from the academia, from universities, from Academy of Sciences. They are virologists, epidemiologists, uh, uh, also some, some um, people from social sciences. I am there for uh, aerosol science. And we had a brainstorming for about two hours, uh, trying to prioritize what is the most important. And one of the key priorities, uh, we defined the uh, stopping the disease at the source, which means, as it was said already, many people are asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic and they have the disease already, they are spreading okay. it, but they don't know about it. OK, Vladimir, stay with this. Kim, we spoke about this before, mask, and I know today actually in Scotland, um, the government there is recommending that people should wear them, not mandatory. Have you changed your view on masks? Because you weren't for them when I interviewed you weeks ago. <laughs> there, are, there is some interesting data um, suggesting that wearing simple cloth masks can prevent the release of respiratory droplets if the person is infected. So if we are worried that we may be exposed to the virus, that we may be um, incubating the virus and, and pre-symptomatic and we're... Um, then wearing a mask can protect the people around us. But we do need to learn how to wear masks carefully. How, and washing our hands is still incredibly vital. So if you're wearing a mask, anytime you touch your mask, you need to then wash your, face, wash your hands um, because the assumption is that you have vi virus on that mask. So um, <coughs> it, it, wearing masks could play a role. Um, whether or not... It will have a significant impact if we adopt that behaviour now. Um, I'm still 50-50 on some of the data. Um, but it would, it would need to be brought in on top of keeping the two-metre rule, washing hands, good um, cough etiquette. All of those are still really vital. You're also against gloves. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so one of the problems with wearing gloves is that the virus can survive longer on vinyl or latex gloves than it can actually survive on your hands. So we're inferring some of this data from how influenza virus behaves, but um, in terms of how the influenza um, okay. interacts with the skin is very similar to SARS coronavirus 2. Um, and so the vi those viruses can survive longer on gloves. So you've got a greater chance of cross-contaminating if you touch them. Gloves masks and yeah, no, i would completely uh, agree with kim because the the problem with the masks issue is that the evidence isn't very strong in any direction and in essence when we're looking from a, say a, an effort perspective we're looking at the evidence which is weak um but possibly beneficial but we're also looking at the risk of benefit versus harm and as kim said if people wear the, so appropriate mask usage may well have a role to play in certain circumstances where people cannot physically distance so that is something that we will keep under constant review and it may well form part of, of measures in, in the coming days and weeks if we need it to. But uh, physical distancing, hand hygiene, respiratory etiquette, all of those things are more gloves. important. No, I'm, I'm with Kim on the gloves. Yeah. A lot of people watching, what about extending the two kilometres to five kilometres? Is that really such a big difference? And it might make a huge difference 
to a lot of people over 70 who can't get out. So I think around the cocooning population, I think there are things that we may mm. need to look at from a population perspective. So if we want to let them out for an hour a day or two hours a day, well then what we may need to look at is actually that everybody else stays in. So they're the type of measures that we are considering on an ongoing basis, because you're right, they have been hardest hit by this. They've been inside for four weeks, coming up on five weeks now. So they're the sort of issues that we're looking at. The two kilometres versus five kilometres, in essence, what we're trying to do is ensure that people meet as few other people as possible. So two to five kilometres probably doesn't make a huge amount of difference in the grand scheme of things. But what we want people to do is stay at home. That's really the fundamental message, unless they have essential trips to make. And as I said, if we want to do something as a society or as, a, as an effort for the cocooning population, then it might, be, might mean asking the rest of us to do something else or not to do something else. Vladimir, in the Czech Republic, they have opened some shops that you're aware of. How is that working there right now? Um, the... The smaller shops are opened until in smaller than 2,500 square meters are opened. Uh, people are working all the time. I mean, we, we haven't stopped working. We are allowed to travel freely across the country, the, but the border is closed uh, practically. Uh, only for goods, the, the, the trucks can go, but uh, personal transport abroad is not allowed. Uh, people, except for fam family setting, people are obliged to wear face, home, homemade face masks, as I am uh, having here. And uh, the point is that uh, we had very similar growth curves as Austria, which is our closest neighbor. We have similar culture. We used to live 300 years together in one state. We have similar habits, very similar country in many aspects. And we started to wear masks on the 19th of March, and uh, since then, the development in, in Czech Republic slowed down very quickly, and so Austria is now one order higher with numbers, uh, and they adopted fa wearing face okay. masks about a week ago. Okay, well, look, Dr. Vladimir, thank you very much for joining us. Kim, thank you for joining us, and Kevin de Gascon as ever, thank you so much as well.